come in. Come into this place of community and consolation. Come into this place of learning and inspiration. Whether you're a longtime member or brand new, you are welcome here. Whether you believe in God all of the time, some of the time, or none of the time, you are welcome here. No matter your religious history, whether you were a cradle UU or still carrying some trauma from a prior religious tradition, you are welcome here. No matter what body brought you here, no matter who you love, you are welcome here at First Unitarian Church of Albuquerque. I'm Reverend Bob Lavalle, and I'm really happy to be here with our senior minister, Reverend Angela Herrera, and our music director, Susan Peck, and our worship leader, Lee Francis IV. And today is Bridging Sunday, the Sunday where we mark the transition of our graduating high school seniors. We're so happy to be joined by Alana Rodriguez, our youth advisor, and a group of youth and young adults who are going to help us celebrate this moment, this pivoting point. Today is also Father's Day, a day of profoundly different emotions, a kaleidoscope of emotions. And during today's service, we'll be taking a moment to light candles for the fathers in our lives. And if you'd like to participate in that, take a moment now to have a candle ready to light. Also, just want to mention that Friday was the first time that we, as a country, celebrated Juneteenth as a national holiday. And I'm praying that this will be an important step forward towards more deeply understanding our history as a country and dreaming and acting our way into a more just future. Our DJ today is Chris Paul, our, who's our tech arts director. Our tech team is Michaela Renz Whitmore and Bill Miller. And everyone involved in the service are reminders that everything we do at this church is an act of co-creation. And for that, I am so grateful. Lee has a couple of announcements. We have two announcements this morning. First, our esteemed and amazing music director, Susan Peck, will be going on a well-deserved sabbatical starting tomorrow. Susan will return on Monday, August 16th. And Susan, we wish you well. May you be blessed with rest and renewal. Our second announcement, there will be a Zoom memorial service for longtime congregation congregant Dick Bailey on Thursday, June 29th at 6 p.m. The Zoom link for the service is in the chat and we, it will also be in our weekly broadsheet. Let us take the moment uh, to light our chalice. On this Bridging Sunday, our chalice is a reminder of the tools of our Unitarian Universalist faith that we seek to pass on to our amazing, incredible young people. Values and the ethics by which to measure the worth uh, and of life, decision-making skills and the use of reason, even in matters of the spirit, a heritage of right conscience and the need to act on what conscience demands, a religious community in which to test and refine dreams and visions, and an attitude of acceptance that embraces diversity with an open heart. Come, let us celebrate together. Good morning. Will you join me in song? This is one of our favorite hymns, I think, one of many, the favorite of many of you. I know I get requests for this one all the time. This is the beautiful Blue Boat Home with words by Peter Mayer set to a wonderful Welsh hymn tune. The words are in the chat bar. Please join me singing Blue Boat Home. Still my drive and heart can say I 
Kodiak and I'm Corbett. Please join us in the children's affirmation. We are Unitarian Universalists. We are people of faith with open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. Thank you. Lovely. On this Father's Day, we take a meditative moment to consider the fathers in our lives and hold the wide variety of feelings that those thoughts bring. I invite you now to a time of quiet reflection and meditation. And if you have a second candle set up, you can light it as part of your meditation. Let us move together into the quiet.
Great. Um, introducing the joys and concerns. So in the sharing of joys and concerns, our happiness is multiplied and our burdens are lessened. When the video begins, please share your joys and concerns in the chat bar so that we may hold them together. If you're not able to write them in the chat bar, we'd still love to know what's on your heart. So please send an email to caring at uuabq.org and let us know how you're doing. Let's share our joys and concerns now. vida nació un sueño de una vida nació una canción nació esta familia linda nació esta visión Regresará en esa milpa por ahí, mamá. Usted regresará, mi daddy, pluma de una pajarita. Mis hermanas, mis hermanos, somos agua y fuego y tierra. Regresará. La cometa del invierno, Manuel. José Manuel. Nació esta visión. Y usted regresará en esa milpa por ahí. Usted regresará y daré pluma de una pajarita. Mis hermanas, mis hermanos, somos agua y fuego y tierra. Regresará, va que bella es la vida. Misteriosa, maravillosa, mira qué lindo, José. All these joys and concerns and those joys and concerns held in our hearts unspoken but no less keenly felt all of them we lift up to the great powers of celebration and healing and renewal known by many names I invite you now into a time of prayer on this bridging Sunday we're reminded that to everything there is a season let us pause to consider the seasons of our lives, both the seasons we're marking in this service right now 
and the seasons that we're experiencing ourselves and witnessing for each other as a congregation. We lift up the newborns in our congregation and their parents. May they know loving care and may all parents be supported by their communities. We lift up the toddlers and preschoolers full of energy and curiosity. May their feelings of wonder at the beauty of the world never cease. We lift up the children in elementary school, developing community and building the fundamentals of thinking and learning. May they be seen for their gifts and come to understand their own worth. We lift up the young people in middle school, confronting the changes in their bodies and a deepening understanding of the complexity of the world. May they find confidence and voices. We lift up the young people in high school, bracing for entry into a daunting world. May they know courage. We lift up young adults trying new things and living with the benefits and consequences. May they be blessed with vision and luck. We lift up those getting married. May they find mutuality and respect. We lift up those choosing to stay single May they know that their worth extends far into their communities. We lift up those raising children. We lift up those for whom this is a joy. And we lift up those who are filled with anxiety and sadness at the paths their children are taking. May they find patience and come to see the world through their children's eyes. And we lift up those without children. May they know that there are many ways to be generative. We lift up those caring for elders. May they find support and balance in their efforts. We lift up those retiring from their careers. May the new identities that they forge be a source of continued growth. We lift up those struggling with aging, including Nancy Lesky, who is recovering from a stroke. May the wisdom they gain be shared with all, and may they find comfort and healing. We remember those who have passed. May light perpetual shine upon them. And may our memories be a comfort and a blessing. To everything there is a season. And may our Unitarian Universalist identities cause every season of our lives to be filled with meaning and purpose. And may we all be held in the heart of love. Peace be with you. And also with you. Will you join me in song again? This is a wonderful round. It's hard to sing in a round on Zoom, but feel free to harmonize with me or follow me one phrase later. This is Building Bridges. And the harmonization of this comes from my colleague Francisco Ruiz, who is a UU musician in Long Beach. Sweet honey, friends we could.
Our reading today is Say Yes by poet Andrea Gibson. When two violins are placed in a room, if a chord on one violin is struck, the other violin will sound the note. If this is your definition of hope, this is for you. The ones who know how powerful we are, who know we can sound the music in the people around us simply by playing our own strings for the ones who sing life into broken wings, open their chests and offer their breath as wind on a still day when nothing seems to be moving. For you, when your fingers are red from clutching your heart so fast, it will beat faster. For the time you mastered the art of giving yourself for the sake of someone else. For the ones who have felt what it is to crush the lies and lift the truth so high, the steeples bow to the sky. This is for you. This is for women. And for the men who taught me only women bleed with the moon. But there are men who cry when women bleed, men who bleed from women's wounds. This is for doubt becoming faith, for falling from grace and climbing back up, for trading our silver platters for something that matters, like the gold that shines from our hands when we hold each other. This is for the grandmother who walked a thousand miles on broken glass to find that single patch of grass to plant a family tree where the fruit would grow to laugh. For the ones who know the math of war has always been subtraction, so they live like an action of addition. For you, when you give like every star is wishing on you, and for the people still wishing on stars, this is for you too. This is for the times you went through hell so someone else wouldn't have to. For the time you taught a 14-year-old girl she was powerful, this is for the time you taught a 14-year-old boy he was beautiful. The world needs us right now more than it ever has before. Pull all your strings, play every chord. If you're writing letters to the prisoners, start tearing down the bars. If you're handing out flashlights in the dark, start handing out stars. Never go a second hushing the percussion of your heart. Play loud. Play like you know the clouds have left too many people cold and broken, and you're the last chance for sun. Play like there's no time for hoping brighter days will come. Play like the apocalypse is only four, three, two, but you have a drum in your chest that could save us. You have a song like a breath that could raise us, like the sunrise into a dark sky that cries to be blue. Play like you know we won't survive if you don't, but we will if you do. That we give every single breath. This is for saying yes. This is for saying yes. Lee Francis <laughs> did justice to that amazing poem by Andrea Gibson. Thank you, Lee. I just need to catch my breath a little bit here. Whew. Well, this is Bridging Sunday, and we have one Bridging senior with us. Charlotte Clark Slinky, and she's about to share a message with us, reflecting on her time in this church, which has been a long time and will continue even as she moves on. And uh, take it away, Charlotte. All right, good morning. Um, so my Unitarian Universalist friends are my go-to movie buddies. They are students, they are artists, they are activists. They are people I haven't seen in years, yet we text each other when we need a companion for a protest. My UU friends are the people who could write a covenant in under 10 minutes and who automatically introduce themselves with their pronouns. They are the people I turn to when I want to learn. So when I listen to the news, when I see change happening, I seek out my UU friends. I watch for the infographics on their Instagrams and listen to their discussions. And every time they're at the forefront of justice, of intersectionality, they wrap compassion and understanding into everything they analyze. They are people who are constantly learning and the people who I constantly learn from. Unitarian Universalists were the first to teach me the value of other cultures, the knowledge and ideas other belief systems can impart. So when I read those articles and watch the protests on the news, I also seek out people who understand a new side of the issue. I begin discussions with people I don't agree with, people who've lived different lives and had experiences I don't understand. 
and Unitarian Universalists were the first to teach me about sexuality, gender, and health. They made no space for shame, embarrassment, or judgment. They taught me to love my body and my mind, so when I learn something new, I also listen to and trust myself. The first reference on my job resume is a UU. Unitarian Universalists have helped me with school projects and fundraisers, and they are the people who support me. No matter my identity, my beliefs, my sexuality, no matter if I succeed or fail, no matter if I change, and no matter if I don't. So while I may have complained about waking up early every Sunday morning, or felt like I wanted to die when my school friend asked if our owl sleepover was some kind of practical test, um, today I look back and I can only feel grateful. I am proud to be a part of the Unitarian Universalist community, this community that taught me to love myself, to value kindness and compassion and worth, to seek out others' knowledge, to practice gratitude, and to work for a better world for each and every person. Thank you for raising me. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you. Today, we honor the youth among us you who are stepping beyond and away and toward. Today we share in your journey and encourage your discovery. Today we welcome your energy and offer a safe place to grow. Today we celebrate your hopes and dreams. Come together, come live, breathe, thrive, rejoice. Now is your time. Today we applaud you for all you have been, for all you are now, for all you will be. Today marks an ending so that I may begin again to hope and do and learn and be. Today you cross this bridge. Go now and explore with wonder. We will support you and nurture you. You are the future. Today you cross this bridge. Go now. Make choices that make you happy. We will support you and nurture you. You are amazing. Today, cross this bridge. Be patient and hopeful. We will support and nurture you. You are an inspiration. Today, I cross this bridge and join in fellowship. Let me grow, but don't let me go. Together, we share a special place. Together, we learn. Together, we love. Together we grow. Congratulations, Charlotte. We're so glad you're here and we wish you the very best in whatever comes next. I want to share a message today. The other day, a friend of mine was telling me about a bat mitzvah she recently attended. And for folks who don't know, that's a coming of age ritual in the Jewish tradition in which the young people coming of age read from the Torah. And my friend was telling me about how this young woman read an interesting passage from Ecclesiastes, which is a book in the Bible and, and the, the Hebrew Bible. And it got me thinking that I really don't know much about Ecclesiastes. I mean, we all know that one famous section to everything there is a season, a time for weeping, and a time for laughing, a time for sowing, and a time for reaping, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you'd think that the book of Ecclesiastes would be this wise and life-affirming text, right? Well, I picked it up and read it, and the book is short, just 12 little chapters, and holy cow, I was wrong. A lot of the book is written in the voice of King David, and his opening speech goes like this. Nothing makes sense. Everything is nonsense. I've seen it all. Nothing makes sense. What is there to show for our hard work here on this earth? People come and people go, but still the world never changes. The sun goes up, the sun goes down. It hurries back to where it started from. The wind blows south, the wind blows north. You know, I'm wondering if they were talking about New Mexico in that part. Round and round, it blows over and over again. All of life is far more boring, boring than words could ever say. That's the beginning of the book. Over the next 11 chapters, the text takes some stabs at various strategies for becoming wise. 
but it keeps on acknowledging that things don't make sense. Like good people suffer and people who aren't good enjoy success and really nothing makes sense. So I, I it's a doozy. And I, I guess I can come away from that text filled with despair. But you know, I actually found the candor, the intellectual honesty, really refreshing. I think it's a depiction of life that many of us can understand. So let me just step back and say that the Bible is kind of a hot mess. It's full of beauty and wisdom, but it's also full of contradictions and bigotry. In Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes, there is some truly awful sexism, even by the dismal standards of the rest of the Bible. And one of the recommendations in Ecclesiastes for coping with the apparent meaninglessness of life is for people to adopt a kind of blind, unexamined faith. And if you're a Unitarian Universalist, you know that's, that's not what we're about. So for all these reasons and more, I read the Bible once in a while, and I read a lot of other things too that generally light me up a lot more. But here in Ecclesiastes, there was some profound honesty about how hard it is to live. And I think that that's a profound way to start any spiritual inquiry, to start a spiritual inquiry. But it can't end there, and it can't end with simplistic advice that doesn't get us any closer to wisdom that carries us through all the transitions that are thrust upon us. On this bridging Sunday, we acknowledge, we even embrace the truth that life is a series of bridges, a long chain of passages from one way of being to another. Change is continuous, change is unavoidable, change is a condition of living. For some of us recently, and to be honest, all of us in general, some of the bridges we cross are sad and final. Yesterday, I sat under that benevolent cottonwood in the courtyard of the church for the memorial service of our beloved congregant, Beatrice Mitchell. And I looked around the service and I saw congregants who I knew were mourning recent losses and thought of many more who weren't there, but who were also mourning. I thought of Deb and Dan Golden, devastated by the loss of their son, Father Graham. I thought of my own father who passed a month ago. These are bridges we don't want to cross, and yet we must. And just as a, an aside, as I sat under the generous protection of that cottonwood tree and I listened to the words of Reverend Angela and the music of Susan Peck, it struck me how a place isn't innately holy. Rather, we consecrate a place with our presence and our intention. And if that courtyard wasn't sacred until yesterday, before yesterday, it certainly is now. I just want to say that we all, all of us on the staff and board, want to return to being together and reconsecrating our shared church spaces. And we're working on it, working on doing it safely and well and inclusively. And we on the staff and board appreciate your patience while we do something that we've never done before. Back to Bridges, though. I saw somewhere recently, and I'm sure I'll botch the quote, but I saw something to the effect that to love someone for a long time is to endure a thousand funerals for who they were as they become who they are. To endure a thousand funerals for who they were as they become who they are. Bridges take us to new places, and we sometimes cross them reluctantly. And we reluctantly watch people that we love cross them. But not all bridges are sad, thank heavens. Amidst the painful ones, we also experience wonderful bridges. Bridges that mark new levels of self-knowledge. 
that mark new depths of faith and understanding, bridges that carry us to new opportunities to become more authentically ourselves and carry us to new chances to create a more just and caring world. Which brings me to bridging and our young people like Charlotte Clark Slakey. I don't, I don't mean to embarrass you, Charlotte, but you are the focus today. Our young congregants are facing a world that might be called nonsense, just like King David did. But I'm grateful for, the, for to see in young people all around me a refusal to accept that and to insist that there be meaning and purpose. And if meaning and purpose aren't evident in the system, then they are going to create it. And I don't think this is just my optimism at work. I want to tell you a story from a few weeks ago. Uh, it was after my father's funeral and we were at the luncheon that my family gave. And we spared no expense. We had both a turkey and ham carving stations. And I was sitting at a table with some friends from college, people my age, and they were talking about their children who are mostly college age themselves now. And my dear friend Jeff said to us that undeniably kids of his children's generation are better people than we were then. And he told us about a time recently when he was describing to his 17 year old son and to his son's friend about how when Jeff was his age, he and his friends would go out for the night and then agree among themselves, among themselves which of their friends they would ditch without telling that friend, of course. Then they'd just leave that unsuspecting friend behind and consider that hilarious. And that was so typical of the ways that we amused ourselves in those days. You know, cruelty masquerading as good times. And he told that story to his friend and his son's friend, and they looked at him nonplussed. And they asked, I, how is that fun? What's fun about that? They just couldn't see it. And it's a small example, but one that hit home for me since I remember that kind of cruelty being a staple of my adolescence. And I think that things have changed a little and a lot of young people are handling their friendships differently with more mercy, more compassion, more understanding, more kindness, so much more kindness. For example, today's young people are so much more open to differing expressions of sexual, different expressions of sexual identity and gender identity. So much less racist, so much less sexist. I think there's a lot to be optimistic about. Folks my age have presented our young people with a deeply troubled world. Sorry about that, kids. And I guess the parents of my generation can take some solace in knowing that they have managed to raise better humans than we were. It feels like too much to ask that young people today redeem my generation for our failures. They have their own bridges to cross, bridges folks from previous generations never imagined, with challenges, challenges and possibilities that are theirs, not ours, my generation's. And our, my generation's work is different. There's a book called Nurturing Children and Youth by Tracy Hurd, and she's a developmental psychologist. And she wrote this book specifically with the moral and spiritual development of young people in mind. The book is divided into developmental stages and at the end of each developmental stage she lists the ways that older people can offer support. And here's a few from the section on young adults. It's actually like 30. I'm not going to read them all but here's some that I thought were really good. Older people can offer young adults support in the form of providing support for self-care including stress management, welcoming the young adult as a person with their own ideas, providing models and conversations about vocations and life choices, 
becoming an anti-racist ally and discussing privilege and oppression. Courage, encouraging, loving, and affirming. And here's my favorite, learning from youth. Learning from youth. Learning from youth may be the most redemptive act that an older person can do. And I encourage anyone who has a younger person in, the life, in their life to consider these forms of support, to live into them and watch how that posture changes their relationship with younger people. In this moment on this bridging Sunday, as we all consider the bridges behind us and the bridges before us, I wanna offer this breath blessing to Charlotte and to all the youth in our church and to all the young adults everywhere crossing bridges. Spirit of life, we ask you to bless our young people as they graduate from high school and enter adulthood. Bless them with good health and strong hearts. Bless them with safety and with good and loyal friends. Bless them with wisdom and clear sightedness. Bless them with a wisdom, with a vision for their future and with the strength and stamina to pursue that vision. Bless them with the ability to know when they must do this alone and to know when they will need the help of others and to ask for that help, knowing that someday they will return the favor. Bless them with times of relaxation, happiness, and joy. Bless them with meaningful work and in good time with whatever form of family they most need and desire. Bless them with love, with hope, with generosity, and with faith. Bless them with all that we can give them and with all that they offer back to the world. May it be so. Amen. And blessed be. One second. <laughs> There's a car driving by in front of me. All right. Um, so the Brain Injury Alliance of New Mexico is our Change for the Future recipient for the months of June, July, and August. The Brain Injury Alliance of New Mexico provides information, referral, support, and advocacy for people in New Mexico with brain injuries. This CFF funding will be used to hire an outreach coordinator eight hours per week to organize volunteers, search for funding opportunities, meet with community stakeholders, and distribute brain injury survival toolkits to clients and their families. You can make an offering online by clicking on the link that we'll put in the chat box. And if you prefer not to give online, you can simply mail a check to the church and include change for the future on the memo. Thank you guys. I believe in being ready. I believe in being ready. I believe in being ready for the time is drawing near.
is drawing near. What is generously given is received with gratitude. Thank you on behalf of First Unitarian Church of Albuquerque. And thank you on behalf of the Brain Injury Alliance of New Mexico. <clears throat> We're moving towards the end of the service. And as always, you're invited to stay on till the end of the credits and we'll put you in a breakout room and you'll have an opportunity to talk to the other great folks who attend this service. And as a prompt, I'll invite you to consider this question in your small groups and it's rather obvious, frankly. I wanna invite you to consider what what bridges do you think you'll be crossing next? What bridges do you think you'll be crossing next? And I just put that in the chat. Let's extinguish our chalices. We extinguish, extinguish this chalice, but not the light of truth, the fire of commitment, or the warmth of community. Those we hold in our hearts until we gather again. Go in peace, gentle people, and practice radical love. <laughs>